Uh, thank you, Joanna. Um, as you told, um, I will try to show you how this very specific um, point of the infectious cycle, which is the attachment to, to the cell, to the host cells, uh, can be used to infer um, uh, evolu the evolution and also the tropism, the host tropism of viruses, in this case of uh, ligovirus. I hope this will be, um, that I will uh, try to uh, pass you a message because it's, I think this is a really um, topic that it's a topic that it's not in our daily uh, research, so I hope you like it. Um, Plague of viruses. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, well, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> It's working. Um, Lagoviruses um, are our study model. Um, they belong to the family Caliciviridae, and that's why they are they belong to, to that also because they have these cup-shaped uh, typical depressions. Um, you might know a virus from this family, which is norovirus, because it causes gastroenteritis in humans. The, the lagoviruses belong to the genus Lagovirus. And they are known since the 80s, but since then a lot of new variants or genotypes or genogroups, there were a, a lot of names uh, for, for these um, appeared. And it was a mess. And a few years ago, we decided to propose a new nomenclature, uh, which although it is not yet accepted by the ICTV, the, the committee, the international committee, I will use it uh, throughout this presentation. Uh, so there are, a lot of pathogenic and non-pathogenic genotypes um, in these uh, lagovirus europeus um, species. Let me present you in greater detail because we will need this in, in our presentation. Uh, the non-pathogenic forms are represented in warm colors. Uh, we have G13, G14, and G22. Um, they they kind of split between hair lagoviruses and rabbit uh, lagoviruses. And that's why you see here that G13 and G14 are only found in rabbits and G22 is only found in hares. This is quite a recent um, discovery. So we did not include it in, it in our analysis. And then we have the pathogenic forms. Um, this is the most known uh, lagovirus, is rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus. It's, a G, it's called G11 now. Uh, it was first uh, described in 1984 and it was restricted to the European rabbit. However, a few years ago, we described the spillover event um, into an Iberian hare. But this was only two isolated cases, so it was not an outbreak. The, the virus REGV cannot cause cause outbreaks in, in hairs. And then we have the hair pathogenic lagovirus, which is which was called European brown hair syndrome virus, now G21, and it affects two hair species, the lipus europeus and the lipus timidus. And there's also um, a case of a spillover infection to a cellulitis. And this was fitting quite nice because the rabbit um, viruses affected rabbits, and the hair virus is affected with hairs. Um, it seems logic, actually. But then a new um, genotype appeared called G G12. I'm having a... Sorry. Okay. Um, sorry again, uh, G12. And this G12, one of the things that makes this new genotype amazing is its ability to infect not only rabbits, but also a lot of hair species. And these are not spillovers, meaning it's a spillover is when um, a virus affects a different species, but it's an isolated case. And the host, an established, established host jam, is when it, it, uh, it not only affects um, uh, these new species as it is able to spread. Uh, within this new species. This is a host jump. And there were a lot of um, cases described. We, we described um, these, these outbreaks in Lipostimidus. Um, we now submitted a, 
that paper describing this new uh, G12 also in Iberian hairs, so it's everywhere. Um, and regarding the, the genomic architecture of these viruses, it is a, it is a very small virus with 7.4 um, KBs. It's a positive sense single stranded RNA virus um, with two open reading frames. Here you can see the, the, the open reading, the first one codes for the non structural proteins in yellow, and for the non -stru the structural protein, it is 60. And the second ORF codes for a minor structural protein called VP10. And another amazing thing of this new uh, genotype G12 is that <clears throat> it has a recombination hotspot over here, splitting the genome into the non structural proteins and the structural proteins. And when I say it recombines a lot, it really recombines a lot, and it recombines with everything. It recombines with non pathogenic. Uh, non-structural proteins here, G13 and G14. It recombines with pathogenic forms, G11 and G21. There's also other recombination events here at the boundary between the first and the second proteins. And it uses always the same tepsid, G12, but different non-structural uh, proteins. Um, and actually, the first outbreaks were already caused by a recombinant strain meaning that we don't know actually the non-structural proteins of this G12. Um, however, let me just point out that this is not, uh, it, uh, it's not specific of G G12. We then found out um, other strains, other classical strains, also a product of recombination between non-pathogenic and pathogenic strains. Nevertheless, it occurs, uh, in my opinion, much more frequently uh, now with G12 or at least we see it more. Um, but I was, as I was telling you, uh, I, we were interested in this particular case in the virus attachment to, to the cell. As you might know, <coughs> viruses are obligate intracellular parasites, meaning they need to attach to host cell receptors to, gain in, to be able to enter into the host cell and then to use the host cell replication machinery. Um, so the very first step is this one, it's when it adheres to the cell surface, in, and it's on this very particular step that we will focus on this presentation. Usually the direct receptors of um, viruses include glycoproteins and carbohydrates, stru uh, carbohydrate structures present on glycoproteins or glycolipids, for example, a very um, uh, a well-known and widely used uh, it's sialic acid. And although we know that these glycans are ubiquitous and present everywhere, it can also um, it can also occur that a specific and variation within cell types um, exists, and this variation within cell types uh, might be responsible for uh, tissue uh, and virus structure. So it's a very important step. It's the very first, but very important step of virus entry. Uh, just uh, out of curiosity, the lagoviruses, for lagovirus, for calicivirus, the most common ligands are carbohydrates. For example, for norovirus, they recognize histoblood group antigens, and flint calicivirus uses sialic. Um, and as I was telling you, this, this, this very first step can determine the tissue tropism. And we see um, some tissue tropism here in lagoviruses because um, although they are primarily enteric viruses, because uh, the non pathogenic forms replicate in the duodenum, so the, so the RNA is usually recovered from the duodenum. Nevertheless, the pathogenic forms um, do not remain confined in the gut because the main virus replication site is the liver. So we see here a split between uh, pathogenic and non-pathogenic tropism. And previous studies on these enteric or non-enteric viruses uh, supported the role of histoblood group antigens and of virus genotype dependent effect of its expression on susceptibility to virus. And that's what prompted from the study um, 
to see if there is a correlation between the oscillation expression and the virus attachment to cells. So what we, do we know about plagovirus attachment to cells? Our knowledge was restricted to G11, which is the classical RHDB. Uh, um, and um, we do know that it attaches to East of blood group antigens. I already mentioned this in the previous slide. These are glycans, and it might not ring a bell the name, but if I tell you that these glycans include the determinants of um, blood type, you will immediately recognize the A, the B, and the H, which corresponds more or less to the O. Um, and these, these, uh, these sugars are formed by stepwise addition of monosaccharides. So here you see that there's a fructose residue that um, is added to the precursor of H type 2, and then H type 2 itself serves as the precursor of A type 2 and B type 2 by the, the addition of an N acetyl uh, galactosamine or a galactose, respectively. Um, and here you can see how the G11 binds to the host. Let me just um, guide you through this image. The size of the letters re represent the availability of A, B, or H in, in rabbit tissues. And these five groups represent different variants because inside or within G11, we can find different subgroups. That's why, that's, that's why this is represented like this. And we see um, unique binding patterns for each variant, for each subgroup meaning that RHGV was able to maintain um, and to recognize this blood group antigens throughout its evolution, although with some variant specificity. Well, nevertheless, the B antigen is always preferred uh, by G11, um, although it is present in, in smaller amounts than A or H. Given this and given all that I told you uh, before, we, we and since RGB uses uh, glycans of the isoblood group antigen type, uh, we wanted to study if glycan specificities of other lagoviruses uh, potentially play a role in determining the host range and the virulence of lagovirus. And to do that, we, we basically performed two uh, studies. The first one, we tested the ability of the different genotypes to recognize glycans. And then we um, saw or we studied the expression of this corresponding of these glycans on rabbit tissues, hair tissues, and also cotton tails. And you might be wondering why we use cotton tails since I only told you about rabbits and hair so far. But although the mechanisms of virus emergence are unknown, we put forward an hypothesis a few years ago that a species jump might be involved in the emergence of virulence in lagoviruses. And this uh, species jump most likely occurred from silvulates, um, in which the virus would circulate as a benign form. So we wanted to include the silvulates to see how um, these glycans and how the virus attaches to silvulates tissues. So regarding the first study, what we did here was to um, basically bind the virus, uh, the different virus strains. Please remember that this, this, these three are non-pathogenic forms, and these ones in, in um, cold colors are pathogenic forms. And what we did here was simply to bind the, the virus to uh, rabbit tissues that we already knew its phenotype, meaning that we used a minus B minus rabbits, A plus B minus, and A plus B plus. You will not find here the A minus B plus, since this is a very rare, rare phenotype for rabbits. Um, what we observe here is that um, B antigen is preferred by G11. This was, this was already new, but also, but, it is also preferred by G13 and G14. However, for G12 and G21, the, the new variant and the hair pathogenic virus 
there was an equal recognition uh, of the A, B, and H modes. So we continued to, to, to study this, and our second study was a similar one, but instead of using uh, rabbit tissues, we used um, a glycan array with more than 600 um, synthetic sugars, and we bind the, VL, the, the, the virus to these um, glycans to see, to, to then measure the fluorescence signal of each binding. And here we observe that there's a consistent preference for B antigen of G11 and G14. Over here, you see that the B type 2 is always preferred. Uh, and this is consistent with its so weaker ability to bind to animals lacking the B epitope. So the previous slide that I show you. Then for G12, it is also consistent. Uh, there's an equal recognition of A, B, and H motifs. And this is consistent with an ability to bind to animals regardless of their of the existence of B epitope or not. And then there was no recognition of A, B, or H motifs for G21. You see here, it cannot uh, at all recognize A, B, or H type 2. And for G13, there was an inconsistent result um, uh, for uh, uh, regarding the, the binding because uh, in the previous slide we saw a preference for the B antigen, but here it recognizes equally well uh, the three um, sugars. However, we we suppose and we we thought this was due to saturation signal, but we further confirmed this with an ELISA. That's what is here. The ELISA is basically the same thing as the previous one, a synthetic sugar and the virus binding to the synthetic sugar. And we see a clear preference for the B antigen for G13, confirming the first results. And for G12, we also confirm uh, the results of an equal recognition of A, B, or H, although it, it has a, slight, a slightly preference for the B antigen but it recognizes the three of them. However, for, G1, for G21, uh, the hair, um, the hair uh, pathogenic lagovirus, we see a clear distinct glycan specificity that it doesn't bite by neural to A, B, or H, but it, it recognizes here these three sugars, which are uh, terminal and acetyl glucosamine residues. This was strange. It, on one side, it makes sense because it's a, it's a different um, genotype, so it might have different uh, glycan recognition patterns, but we were kind of lost uh, in the middle of this. We never saw this for, for the other lagoviruses, so we, we didn't know what to do. And we decided to start from the very first beginning, which is try to understand if it binds to N or O linked glycans. That's what we did over here. You can see here, this is the binding to N-glycans. This is the control, meaning that the enzyme treat treatment works. And again, here works, so it, it decreases the, the amount of N-glycans in about 50%. And here, it almost deletes uh, all, all glycans present in the tissue sample. And what we observed was, uh, was that ABHS or G21 binds equally well regardless of N glycans, but when we took the O glycans, it decreases the binding in almost uh, around 80%, I think. So at this point, we knew that G21 attaches to O glycans, which is the same pattern as observed for G1 strains, but we wanted to uh, further um, understand this. Next, we performed immunohistochemistry. So these are the duodenum, the hair duodenum extract. And you see the, the red means that um, it's a positive signal. Um, and what we did here was, again, to remove the n acetylglucosamine residues from the tissue. This is the non-treated tissue, and ABHSV binds really well. But when you treated the tissues to remove the n acetylglucosamine, um, the, the staining by G21 diminished. So um, 
we further confirm that it binds to N-acetyl glucosamine residues uh, present on all glycans. Summing this up, uh, besides this that I, I already said, uh, we see a preferential recognition of the B epitope in rabbit gut tissue by G11, G13, and G14, so pathogenic and non pathogenic strains. And G2, G12 has a less pronounced preference for the B over the A and H epitopes, which is consistent with its, with its ability to bind equally well regardless of the AB phenotype. Uh, Taking uh, these results into account, we then um, wanted to uh, test the, the, the expression of the terminal n acetyl glucosamine residues on, on hair tissues, but also on rabbits and in, on silvilagos. So we tested it for, for duodenum and trachea because these are the likely doors of entry of the virus. And so we, we tested the expression of the n acetyl glucosamine residues. Um, as you see here, you see here a lot of red, a lot of positivity. Um, I know it is not quite understandable here, but mm, there's a slightly lower expression of these um, residues in European in, in rabbit, in European rabbit over here. This is a stronger signal. And interestingly, in trachea, we only observe um, positivity for hairs, meaning that rabbits and, uh, rabbits and cotton tails um, lack the expression of these residues in trachea. So we, what we could conclude is that the terminal and acetyl glucosamine residues are present in a species specific manner, um, both in trachea and in, in a less extent in, in duodenum, and this might correlate with the host species specificity of G21, which does not infect rabbits. Um, this previous variation found prompted us to investigate the expression of A, B, and H motifs in lagomorph tissues in search for potential host preferences uh, based on the abilities uh, of, the, of the virus strains to recognize these glycans. And that's why we have here uh, the A, B, and H type 2 um, recognition for rabbits, hares, and silvilegos. Here it's trachea, and here it's duodenum. And I will um, guide you to every um, uh, sugar uh, here. So for the A antigen, you see that it's expressed in trachea uh, and also in the small intestine of rabbits and hares. Um, it, we only have here one sample, but you can see that, uh, but we knew that there, there was some genetic polymorphism. So some rabbits expressed the A, while some others don't. Um, however, in hares, they all expressed the A antigen. And for Silvilegos, it does not express the A antigen in trachea, but it expresses it in the duodenum. For the B antigen, uh, it is not detected in, in rabbit trachea, but it is detected in the duodenum. Uh, and uh, for silvilegos, it is detected both in trachea and in, in the gut. However, for hares, it is not present at all, uh, either for trachea and for duodenum. The last one, the H antigen, uh, also, it is also very interesting because it is strongly expressed in trachea and small intestine of rabbits and silvilegos. You see here a lot of red, uh, so it's, it's strongly expressed, but it is not detected in hairs. Actually, it is undetectable or it is present at low levels. But you might see here some red and wonder why I'm saying it is negative. But the thing is, it is not at the apical. Uh, surface of the cells, it's it's more uh, even, so it's so it's it it is not as easier to access for the virus. So in the end, the most uh, one of the most interesting results here is that hairs like both the B and H antigens in trachea and in the gut, and this does might explain or might reflect. The lack, of, uh, the lack of accessibility and the lack of infection of hairs by G1, meaning that 
if G1 viruses uh, do not um, only or, or uh, recognize, uh, sorry, uh, the lack of expression of the, this B antigen and the lack of expressivity of H antigen might explain why uh, hairs are not infected by G1. And also, uh, we can conclude from here that the broad uh, East of blood group antigen specificity that we found in G12 uh, might be associated with its ability to infect both European rabbits and hares. So, summing all this up, this study, um, I can tell you that we failed to explain the emergence of virulence because we found similar like and specificities in both pathogenic and non-pathogenic forms. And we also failed to explain the lack of infection of cotton tails by G11. But please uh, bear in mind that this is only a, a step of the infectious cycle. And there are a lot of other uh, factors, so a lot of other motives why um, they can not be infected or we didn't find, find yet the infection by G11. For example, um, entry receptor incompatibility, replication mechanism incompatibility, etc. But our most interesting uh, finding and the, the summary of all these is that spe species specific glycan expression might be a major contributor to the host specificity and range of lagoviruses. Um, as host specific glycans are associated with susceptibility to infection. Um, by lack of viruses. And this, just to, to, to finish, this, this uh, picture um, is a very, it's a very good summary of what I was telling you here. So we have which, um, which uh, sugars each species um, presents in its surface. And so the colors do not rep uh, are not the same as the previous slide. But as you see here, G21 only recognizes blue knack residues, and that's why it only affects hairs. Uh, G12 recognizes everything, and that's why it affects everything. Um, and G11, um, although it recognizes prefer preferentially B, it acquired the, the ability to also recognize A and that's and H, and that's why it is present in, in rabbits. Um, just to finish my presentation, I would like to thank, well, thank you for listening, um, but also to thank my, my, my group in CBU. Um, also to thank all my colleagues in CERN where this uh, work was performed, especially Jacques and Adrien. Um, a lot of people involved in sampling and virus preparation and the printed glycan arrays, and also FCT for funding. And thank you all for listening.